Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here with some breaking news. We have just had a giant radio burst from Cygnus X3, a binary system located in the constellation of Cygnus or the Swan constellation, which is viewable from the Northern Hemisphere. And this is a huge increase over the normal amount of radio waves that we are receiving from this unique binary system. We get these sort of giant radio bursts every few years, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. The last one was August of 2024, and this is an order of magnitude more gigahertz energy now that we're receiving from Cygnus X3 than background levels before, and this could just be the beginning of this giant radio burst. So there's still room for this energy increase to go up even more. And Cygnus X3 is already a pretty famous binary system because it's one of the brightest X-ray objects in the sky. It often emits extremely high energy gamma rays and it also emits energies in infrared and then also at these radio microwave frequencies. And basically every single telescope that gets launched at some point does a look at Cygnus X3 to do its calibration if it looks at those specific frequencies. So it's been very well studied now for decades. So we have a long track record on it. And what's so interesting about this giant radio burst is that it's occurring during a very notable planetary alignment right now within our solar system, where there's certain archetypal significations that are active because of the position of the planets and, and what constellation they are and all of that. And this is perfectly resonant with the current archetypal significations that are active in our solar system right now. So it's almost like we have this tether going out 32,000 light years in meaning and synchronicity within our universe because of this giant radio burst from Cygnus X3. So in today's video, we're going to learn a little bit more about Cygnus X3, its unique binary structure, what a giant radio flare or giant radio burst is, and then we'll talk about these unique archetypal significations that are active right now and what that may mean going forward. This giant radio burst from Cygnus X3 began yesterday, January 15th, 2026. And I first picked up the news today when I was reading the Astronomer's Telegram. This is a website where a bunch of astronomers can publish breaking news effectively and new information on whatever they're looking at. I'll link that website in the video description as well as the two Astronomer's Telegram specifically that we're looking at here. So the beginning of a giant radio flare of Cygnus X3, this was published on the 15th at 1555 UTC. And during the multi-frequency monitoring of the galactic microquasars with the Raytan 600 radio telescope, we, just, we detected the giant flare from the microquasar Cygnus X3 on the 15th of January at frequencies of 1.42 to 30 gigahertz. So this is actually the same frequency range that your Wi-Fi router uses, as well as 5G, which is interesting. These sort of frequencies are able to hit the Earth and actually cut through the ionosphere and interact with us direct, directly at the surface, though the strength matters. The strength of these signals is quite weak compared to what we're exposed to here on the surface because of lightning strikes, let's say, which also produce these frequencies, or artificial man-made radiation. They picked up a pretty significant increase. The flux increased from about 24 millijanskis all the way up to 6.1 janskis at 4.7 gigahertz yesterday, the 15th of January. And this could be just the beginning of this flare. And this is further confirmed by another astronomer's telegram, renewed activity of Cygnus X3 observed with the NASU telescope array at 1.4 gigahertz. And so they have a little bit of a narrower frequency range that they look at, but they also notice that the flux density increased up to 2.3 Janskis at 1.4 gigahertz. And this was published today. So this giant radio flare is still occurring and likely will occur at least for another couple of days, though it's hard to say. Here we have our data and we can see specifically uh, for frequencies of one to 30 Hertz, the flux density in Janskis here. And Jansky is 10 to negative 26 watts per square meter to the Hertz. So it's a very unique uh, measurement of power density effectively that's used for astronomical objects because the energy coming in from them is quite a bit lower than for example, total solar irradiance, which is also watts per square meter, but that'll be for the sun here on earth, 1,372 or so. so 
keep that in mind, this is 10 to the negative 26, but these are specific frequencies with their own information characteristics to them. So they're not to be ignored in my opinion. Here we see that the frequency uh, had the highest flux at about six gigahertz, though it was also elevated here, just in general, going from about four to 15 or so. Uh, and in general, it's quite a bit higher than it was before. Here we see some of the days before uh, yesterday, the 15th, and it was quite a bit lower here at about 200 millijanskis, 400 at these specific frequencies. We can see that if we go to this graphic right here, here's our background flux across this time range, just the recent 100 days or so. And then we see how we actually dropped off. That's a common feature of these giant radio bursts is that you'll actually get the flux to drop down before this huge increase in the energy, which is quite uh, interesting if you think about it. So we are up here now, this is a logarithmic scale. So if you think that's not big of, that big of a jump, well, this is going up 10 times each time. So we were hovering even below 100, you know, just about 100 days ago, down this 20, 30, 40, 50 range for Milojanskis. Now we're up to, five, six, seven, and that could go up to 10, 15, 20 Janskis. It could even go higher. Perhaps this turns out to be a record setting giant radio flare from this binary system. That is certainly possible. What is this binary system? Well, Cygnus X3, we don't exactly know what it is because all this stuff is, you know, we have interpretations of it. So, we think that there's either a neutron star or a black hole that is orbiting with a very large end of life star known as a Wolf Rayet star. And they are orbiting each other so fast that their orbital period around each other is only 4.8 hours. So it's incredibly, incredibly quick. What happens is that whatever this object is, a super high density and high gravity, the neutron star, you know, made up of just pure neutrons, or a black hole, pulls material off of it, forms a secretionary disk, and then there's these outbursts. And it's interesting because they talk about this as, you know, bringing in superheated gas and everything. This is all plasma, folks. And plasma releases these sort of frequencies. So we have this object that which has this massive envelope of plasma around it. And sometimes there's these big bursts that occur off of it. It also has these jets too. See these, uh, these jets there? They're traveling close to speed of light. Uh, so these would be like relativistic jets and they're tightly collimated. And we see these from a bunch of astrophysical objects throughout our galaxy and across different scales. Central magnetized rotating bodies form these sort of jets. And uh, this star is also interesting because it's very unstable. The, the evidence suggests that it's a streaming out so much energy that's blasting off its outer surface, allowing for the secretionary disk to form. And as a result, you get these big outbursts. So Cygnus X3 was one of the first objects to be picked up that has these sort of X-ray bursts and radio bursts and everything. It's been known about for a while. There's another one that's also been known about for some time, that's Cygnus X1, that's even bigger. Uh, both of them are quite famous. So we get these sort of giant radio bursts from them. Uh, it's not super uncommon. It's not like the first time this has happened in 50 years, but what is special about this time is what is happening in our solar system at the same moment in time. If you learn about the legend of the swan, or the Greek legends that involve swans, you can kind of get a sense of uh, what I'm talking about. So let's look at Stellarium to get a sense of uh, exactly what I mean. And we can see the bigger picture here, because I think this is telling us something. So here we have Stellarium, our open source software to help us see the night sky, position of the planets, and more. And I'm gonna turn off the ground and atmosphere. I'm gonna turn on the constellations. This line there shows the ecliptic and we are going to go right to our planets to start. And you'll notice that we have all these planets grouped up together. We have the sun, we have Mercury, Mars, Venus. And if you go forward just two days, you'll see that we have our moon join in. So here's our new moon as well, right there. So a huge clustering of planets around our sun almost in exact opposition to that, which is kind of hard to show you, 
with Stellarium. But almost an exact opposition to that is Jupiter. And this is key. There's a legend that involves Jupiter being a swan, or in this case, Zeus, the Greek version. You know, Jupiter is the Roman version of the god. Zeus is the Greek version of the god. So uh, let us look first to see where Cygnus X3 is, and then I'll go into the, uh, the legend. So here we have Cygnus, the swan constellation there. And here specifically is Cygnus X3. I'm going to put a marker on this, okay? So we're going to really zoom in onto this guy, put a marker on this. Also have to pause that. And there we go. There's Cygnus X3. And while we're also at the search screen, I'm going to put in Pluto because you'll also notice that we have Pluto in this alignment right here. It's not just Mars, Mercury, Venus, the moon, the sun. It's also Pluto, huge clustering of planets and uh, the sun and the moon right now and specifically in two days. What we have is this myth, this Greek myth of Zeus turning into a swan. And so you had Queen Leda, which is the queen of the Spartans, along with King Tyndareus. And she was very, very beautiful queen. And Zeus being the, the guy he was, is that he saw her and started lusting after her. And effectively, he was like, I want to be with her. So she was out by the river, the stream, just kind of hanging out, washing herself, whatever. And Zeus turned himself into a swan. She was amazed by the beauty of this swan. He swam up and she started stroking and holding the swan in the moment. Well, that moment turned into a passionate moment because then Zeus, as a swan, impregnated her. and They got it on. And afterwards, he flew away or something, right? It's kind of wild that Zeus did that as a swan, but that's what Zeus does. If you know the myths, then you know that Zeus is uh, crazy like that. And then she was so overcome with desire in general after that lovemaking with the swan that when she went back uh, to the palace, she also then had a uh, fervent night of love with the king. And what happened is she became pregnant and she gave birth to two sets of twins. And one set of twins was immortal. Those are the twins from Zeus. And then another set of twins was mortal. So the immortal twins were Pollux and Helen. And then the mortal twins were Castor and Clymenestra. And Helen is the Spartan princess that eventually starts the Trojan War because of her extreme beauty. And you may recognize the names Pollux and Castor because Castor and Pollux are the two stars that primarily make up the constellation of Gemini. So they are known as the twins. And well, let us look to see, we know we're talking about Zeus here, so we're talking about Jupiter. Let's, just, let's see where Jupiter is right now. Jupiter right now is in the constellation of Gemini. There's Castor and there's Pollux. So we have Jupiter in this arrangement where it's in that constellation of Castor and Pollux. And if we go by the myth of Cygnus, the, the main one with the swan, you have the birth of Castor and Pollux in the first place. And we have this giant radio flare effectively activating, saying, hey, pay attention to this right now. At the same time, we have 3 Eye Atlas at this moment heading towards a very close flyby of Jupiter. That will be March 17th. And on the 22nd of January, we will have the Sun, Earth, and 3 Eye Atlas exactly in a line. And that's also going to be evolving uh, all these planets here. If we look at these planets, we see that we have Venus and Mars, uh, just having performed a conjunction with the sun, the two lovers, Venus and Mars, right? That really speaks to passion, desire, and in some aspects, the birth of something new. And so we have all these significations suggesting that there's something new being birthed at this moment in time. We're in the, uh, the stage of it being conceived and maybe in some time period, maybe around March, because that's when we're going to have this 3 eye atlas flyby, this interstellar factor, right? It's Cygnus X3 is 32,000 light years away. That perhaps is when we see the birth of whatever this is. This new kingly energy come in. Uh, this division, perhaps, because we had two sets of twins, mortal and immortal, Castor and Pollux. And there's kind of a, a duality right now across society in general. 
in a division, it's really a decision of like, which way do we want to go? Perhaps it's speaking to that. Um, and we also have this planetary alignment, Saturn and Neptune unfolding at this moment in time, which is very close to the zodiac degree of Cygnus X3. We see them right here. It's all happening roughly in the same part of the zodiac. This is uh, Capricorn and Aquarius, but that's all happening very close together. And Saturn and Neptune is very much a signature of the sort of far distant astrophysical events having some sort of impact here on Earth or in our solar system. Because Neptune is very diffusive and liminal and it expands out to the entire universe, but Saturn is the manifester. So we saw three Atlas come into our solar system, or at least our awareness and perception under a Saturn-Neptune near conjunction back in July. Of course, it's going fully conjunct in February. So I find this giant radio burst, this giant radio flare, interesting because I think it's just a little bit of like a, hey, heads up, if you want the clues, we'll provide them to you, but you gotta pay attention. That's what we do. We pay attention and we look at those clues. I, this is certainly significant to have all these planets here, Mercury, Venus, Mars, the Sun, the Moon, Pluto, what? And then we're gonna have that really go crazy in March. So with the equinox, as all of these move in to alignment with Saturn and Neptune, they're just gonna have performed their conjunction in February. It's really gonna get wild. Uh, and we also have equinox energies at that moment in time, and that is when we are going to be having the close flyby of 3i Atlas to Jupiter on the 17th, just before the spring equinox. I just think all that is too resonant to ignore, so I wanted to bring that to your awareness, and it provided an opportunity also to discuss a little bit about some of these far distant astronomical objects and the energies that they have. Uh, I find it very interesting. I'll keep you up to date with any new developments that are significant for this giant radio flare. I mean, we're always having uh, like X-ray bursts there or gamma ray bursts there, but the level of significance varies. Sometimes it's you know fairly routine, quasars going off, pulsars, all this stuff. This seems to be quite significant. Last time, again, it had a significant flare was August of 2024, so it's been a while. Um, and in general, if you want to stay updated with what is happening with the Earth, then you can subscribe to the channel. I post video updates almost daily. We look at earthquake activity, volcanic activity, geomagnetic storms, uh, solar activity, space weather, these sort of planetary alignments and resonances, cosmic factors, and so much more. So I hope to see you around. Thank you all so much for watching the video for smashing that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel grow. And if you like to learn a little bit more about what I do, then you can also go to my website, earthevolution.com. I have a e-store there where I sell a variety of holistic wellness products and also merchandise. And so that's the other thing that I do outside of just YouTube. Uh, and you can also follow me for updates in between videos on my X account. That's at Stefan Burns Geo. All this is linked in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching. Wishing each and every single one of you well. What are your thoughts on what all this means? I don't have the full picture, the full story, but I just feel like this is too significant, too synchronistic to ignore. So I'd love to hear what the community, what all of you think as well. So please share that in the comments below. I'll see you all very soon. Have a great day. Thanks so much.